welcome back guys now in this video let's discuss about muscles of respiration muscles of respiration now we all know respiration was divided into two phases one is inspiration and expiration Okay. Now, the first important point which you need to know is that out of these two processes, which process needs energy? Inspiration is active process, which means ATP is broken down. ATP is involved. Energy is needed for the process of inspiration to bring the air into the lungs. We have to burn energy. We have to use ATP molecules. But expiration is passive process. No use of energy. Okay, there is no use of energy for normal expiration. See, the point is during inspiration, ATP is getting utilized. For what? To bring the air into the lungs. Sir. To bring the air into the lungs, ATP is utilized. But where exactly this ATP is getting utilized? Where exactly this ATP are getting broken down into ADP? Where means during muscle contraction. During inspiration, certain muscles are contracted. Because of that muscle contraction, ATP is getting broken down. And this ATP is utilized to bring the air into the lungs. How air is going to enter into the lungs that we will discuss in the later part. But for now, the ATP is used for muscle contraction. Which muscles are you can ask me? So those muscles which are helping in the process of inspiration. So the inspiratory muscles. What are the examples of inspiratory muscles? Examples are... The major muscle is diaphragm. So, diaphragm is a major muscle. Okay. Now, this diaphragm is innervated by which nerve? For the contraction of this diaphragm, definitely there should be a nerve innervation. So, what is the nerve innervating this diaphragm? Phrenic nerve. Now, what is the root value of this phrenic nerve? The root value is C3 to C5. So, C3, C4, C5 spinal nerves, cervical spinal nerves are coming down and innervating the diaphragm. And the diaphragm contracts which helps in bringing the air into the lungs. Now, apart from diaphragm, there are certain other muscles which also helps in bringing the air into the lungs. They are minor muscles. Now, they include external intercostal muscles okay external intercostal muscles scalene muscles and one more muscle called as sternocleidomastoid okay so you can see here what are the muscles involved in the process of inspiration First one is diaphragm, second muscle is inter ex external intercostal muscles, scalene muscles and sternocleidomastoid muscles. But out of all of them, during a normal inspiratory process, the major muscle involved is diaphragm only. Now, having said that, what are the muscles involved in expiratory process? There is no need of any muscle, there is no need of any muscle contraction I should say. There is no need of any muscle contraction. During the process of expiration. Just expiration needs relaxation of muscles. Okay, let me write it down here guys. Relaxation of muscles will cause expiration. It's simple, right? We have discussed that expiration is a passive process. 
now if i am saying it's a passive process definitely muscle contraction shouldn't be there if there is muscle contraction atp will be utilized then it will become active process so expiration is a passive process there is no need of any muscle contraction just a simple relaxation of diaphragm and other muscles of inspiration will cause expiration but important point is for forceful expiration forceful expiration something like uh, when you are blowing the balloons for the party of your friend now there you are there you will be doing forceful expiration something like this now that forceful expiration will utilize certain muscles so take it down here guys forceful expiration uses muscles now what are those muscles important a important muscle is let's write it down here the first important muscle is rectus abdominis rectus abdominis that's a six pack muscle right so rectus abdominis and internal intercostal and transverse abdominis okay so external inter uh, sorry internal intercostals rectus abdominis and transfer the transverse abdominis are the muscles which are helping in the process of expiration okay that to forceful expiration not normal expiration normal expiration is a passive process now after discussing this just remember this one point if they ask you what is the most important muscle the major muscle involved in forceful expiration the important muscle involved in forceful expiration is rectus abdominis okay now after saying this let's discuss about a topic called as mechanics of breathing mechanics of breathing now in this topic we'll be discussing how exactly air will go into the lungs why exactly air will go into the lungs okay why air is moving into the lungs because of the contraction of inspiratory muscles we have just seen right during inspiration muscles are contracting now okay if muscles are contracting why air is going into the lungs that we will discuss now guys see here i am showing you a very simple structure i am actually showing you one alveoli okay i am not representing the entire lung i am just showing you one alveoli and surrounding the alveoli i am showing you something called as a pleura okay here this is the pleural space or pleural cavity here i am showing you alveolus or the alveoli now we have already studied in the, the starting of the chapter something called as boyle's law what's boyle's law now boyle's law states as pressure is inversely proportional to volume which means whenever you increase the volume there the pressure will go down and whenever you decrease the volume their pressure will go up now see during resting state what is the pressure inside the alveolus see imagine i am not breathing i am not taking inspiration or i am not even expiring i am just simply sitting like this now the environmental air the environmental pressure is in direct contact with my lungs or not yes why my nostrils why my nose by the trachea by the bronchi see all this pressure is communicating down to alveolus normally in the atmosphere the atmospheric pressure is 760 mm hg which is considered as zero atmospheric pressure let's take it zero so what is the pressure inside the alveolus the same pressure is getting communicated here so pressure inside the alveolus is also zero Okay, during resting state. Now, your lungs, or I should say your alveoli, are surrounded by pleura. 
your entire lungs are surrounded by pleura or not yes pleura now important point is here inside the pleura the pressure is always negative okay inside the pleura the pressure is negative how much negative during resting state the pressure inside the pleura is minus 2.5 mm hg minus 2.5 mm hg is the intraocular pressure remember very important note intra pleural pressure is always negative it's always always negative now if you ask me why it is always negative it is because of something called as dynamic harmonious antagonism okay let me explain you here itself so that you will understand guys i am showing you lung in a simple way okay here i am showing you the lung now lung is surrounded by pleura now how many layers of pleura is there there is something called as visceral pleura as well as parietal pleura see right now i am showing you one layer of pleura okay here is here with the bronchi which will be entering into the lung now i am showing you this red color layer of pleura which is a tightly adherent or attached to the lung now this is visceral pleura is attached to the lung now there is one more layer of pleura okay now this layer of pleura it is attached to which structure it is attached near to the ribs here are the cross section of the ribs i am showing you okay now what i am saying is there are two layers of pleura one is visceral pleura attaching to the lungs and the other layer of pleura is called as a parietal pleura which is attached to the ribs now important point which you need to know is see lungs because of the elastic recoil forces and because of the surface tension forces all the time lungs want to collapse okay so all the time lungs are trying to collapse so visceral pleura is moving inward visceral pleura is trying to move inward and the ribs the rib cage now these bones all the time want to expand guys i am here talking about two important systems first important system is the lung system lung all the time want to collapse but the chest wall the ribs all the time they want to expand out they want to blow out but the lung and the ribs are came together are kept together with the help of this membrane called as a pleura now one pleura is attached to the lungs the other pleura is attached to the ribs now just see what are the forces acting here all the time ribs want to move out so parietal pleura also trying to move out here lungs want to move in so visceral pleura is also trying to move in now tell me guys here at the same point at the same point two opposite forces are acting one force is trying to bring the pleura in and other force is trying to take the pleura out so here in between the parietal pleura and visceral pleura a gap was created that's the pleural space and there develops the vacuum here vacuum is developed okay so vacuum we all know vacuum is we all know vacuum is a negative pressure okay vacuum is a negative pressure so in the pleural cavity what is there in the pleural cavity all the time negative pressures are there negative pressure of 2.5 mm hg is there that's nothing but vacuum so remember for your entire life in pleural cavity there is a vacuum okay and during resting state how much is that vacuum pressure minus 2.5 okay now here i want you to know one more important pressure that is called as a transpulmonary pressure what exactly is trans 
transpulmonary pressure. Now, transpulmonary pressure is a pressure difference between pressure in alveolus minus pressure in intrapleural space. Now, transpulmonary pressure TPP is equal to pressure inside the alveolus minus pressure inside the intrapleural space. Now, what is the pressure inside the alveolus? Pressure inside the alveolus is 0. 0 minus what is the intrapleural pressure during rest? Minus 2.5. So, minus of minus is plus. So, transpulmonary pressure is plus 2.5 mm hg. So, what exactly we are discussing here? See, if I ask you one question. During resting state, your lungs are kept open or not? Your alveolus are kept open or not? Just tell me. Yes, your alveolus are kept open. Now, with which pressure alveolus is kept open? To keep the alveolus open, definitely you need a positive pressure. Now, what is that positive pressure? It's nothing but transpulmonary pressure. The pressure difference between the pressure difference between the alveolus and the intrapleural space. So, minus of minus minus of minus 2.5 mm Hg is plus 2.5 mm Hg. In a simple words, we can say that. See, this intrapleural pressure, it's a, it's a negative pressure, right? it's a vacuum, right? It sucks everything, it's, it, it attracts or it expands everything, okay? It's a negative pressure. See, during childhood, we all have played this game. See, take a glass, glass means uh, a steel glass, okay? Now, whenever you have drank all the water from in this glass, now whenever you take this glass and whenever you put it to your mouth and try to suck out all the air from the glass, so... Now, when you are taking out all the air from the glass, inside the glass, vacuum will be generated. Right? Because there is no pressure, you have taken out all the air. Now, there is no air, vacuum is generated. Now, what will happen? Now, this vacuum will try to suck your lips into the glass. So, vacuum is a distending pressure or vacuum will suck things towards it. Now, just think logically, your alveoli or your lungs during resting state, are they surrounded by vacuum or not? Yes, during resting state, inside your intrapleural space, there is a vacuum of minus 2.5 mm Hg. Now, this vacuum is keeping the lungs alveoli open, is keeping the alveoli in a open state. With the surrounding of vacuum, with the presence of vacuum around the lung, lungs are little bit expanded even during the resting state. So, can we say the transpleural pressure, this 2.5 mm Hg, okay. Now, this transpleural pressure, it is a distending force. Okay, which keeps alveoli open during resting state. This is what you need to know. These are the basics which you need to know for your exams. So, what we have discussed? We have discussed about the muscles of inspiration, muscles of expression and also we have seen during resting state, what are the pressures inside the alveoli? There is Zero pressure, zero mm Hg. Now, outside the alveoli, the pressure inside the pleura is minus 2.5 mm Hg, which is a vacuum. And one more pressure which, I have, which we have seen, that is a transpleural pressure. The transpleural pressure is plus 2.5 mm Hg. And this plus 2.5 mm Hg, this transpleural pressure is the distending force which keeps the alveoli in an open state even during resting. Now, in the next video, we will see what are the changes that will happen during inspiration and during expiration? What are the pressure changes? Why air enters into the lung? That we will discuss in the upcoming video. Thank you.